are never going up. <laughs> if that sounds like something you'd say, then the Hyundai Ioniq clearly isn't for you. But if you want a fuel efficient vehicle without the exuberant eco pretense, pay attention. Right off the bat, the Ionic deserves credit for its styling, which, despite an exceptionally slippery 0.24 drag coefficient, isn't needlessly weird. Consider this proof that wind cheating design can be simple, handsome, and look like it's from this dimension. This quasi-traditionalist theme continues inside where, look, it's a clean upscale layout without the efficiency theme goofballery. I especially dig this soft touch checkered pattern that extends to the door panels. Oh, and the armrests are cushy as well. But what impresses me the most are the little things you find throughout the cabin, things you won't find on some competitive offerings. For instance, sliding sun visors, LED interior lighting, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, Prius says no. And as for the Honda Clarity and Chevy Volt, both of which are missing the most important feature in the entire world, according to me. Adjustable lumbar support. The front seats might be comfortable and offer lumbar support, but they do lack lateral support. And again, who cares about lateral support in an Ionic? A more pressing concern is passenger space and comfort, which, as you explore the back seats, turns out to be great. Even the middle seat is livable. Up front, the mostly digital instrument cluster is a neat modern touch, but again, it's not needlessly futuristic. Legibility and usability remain the top priority here, and with all of the Ionic's pleasantly unambiguous controls. Helping amplify the Ionic's practical nature is a deep 26.5 cubic foot cargo area that's accessible through a wide opening. Further bolstering its normal car appeal, the Ionic is, bizarrely, no slouch in the dynamics department. Chassis and suspension control in corners is great, although we do wish the ride was a little less bouncy over the rough stuff. On the highway, the steering has eh, a little bit of on center slack, but most drivers will find it to be pretty damn responsive. And what about you? I find it to be just pretty responsive. With a combined output of 139 horsepower, the Ionic sounds like a snooze fest, but it's not. Sport modes in most cars are basically just electronic gimmicks, but the Ionix fundamentally alters the personality of the car to the point you might say it's down for a good time. Okay, maybe not that much of a good time, but the driving experience overall is just so uncharacteristic for a mainstream hybrid. If the Ionic Hybrid has a notable shortcoming, it's the occasionally clunky operation of the six-speed dual-clutch automatic. We've experienced dual-clutch transmissions that deliver speedy, imperceptible shifts, but this isn't one of them. If you're curious, these steering wheel paddle shifters have nothing to do with the transmission. They control regenerative braking intensity. Crank it up to level three, and you might not need to use the brake pedal, at least not very often. In daily use, the Ionic is generally easy to use thanks to good sight lines, regenerative brakes that only take a day or two to get used to, and interior noise levels that split the difference between the Toyota Prius and Chevy Volt. Of course, the big question is fuel economy. On that score, the Ionic Hybrid is impressively efficient, especially the base blue trim. Those numbers top the Prius, at least on paper. Because in the real world, driving our limited trim tester landed about 4 mpg shy of the EPA's combined figure. Your results may vary. We focused on the hybrid model, but the Hyundai Ionic actually comes in two more flavors, including a plug-in hybrid that can cover about 27 miles on electricity alone, and an electric model with a 124 mile range and the ability to recharge in about 4.5 hours using a 220 volt charger. Whatever you need, if you dislike burning gasoline, there's an Ionic to suit. Starting around $23,000, including destination charges, the Ionic Hybrid's base price handily undercuts the Toyota Prius and Ford C-Max Hybrid. If the Ionic Electric sounds more intriguing, 
expect to spend a little more than $30,000, though federal and state tax incentives can knock thousands off that price. It's also worth investigating electric cars like the well-established Nissan LEAF, the fun-to-drive VW e-Golf, and the Chevy Bolt that, for its $7,000 premium versus the Ionic, offers nearly double the range. Whichever Ionic you choose, it'll come standard with a backup camera, a multifunction steering wheel, Bluetooth, a 7-inch touchscreen, and 7 airbags including a driver's knee airbag. Optionally available throughout the Ionic range is wireless phone charging, embedded navigation, leather, and a power driver's seat. Though interestingly, a power front passenger seat is not offered, though that's a move we can only assume was made to save weight. There's also a tech package that bundles together adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, and automatic emergency braking. Look at the sales numbers, and hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and electric vehicles remain a meager portion of total cars sold each year. Nevertheless, we have a wide range of options to choose from, some better than others. The Hyundai Ioniq is one of only a handful of mass market cars that makes my job so incredibly easy. It's efficient, practical, looks pretty good, and it offers a ton of useful tech. There's just not much to complain about. Stupid Prius wanted me! Go back to Bretonia! Although some people will find a way. <laughs>